on everyone. So Jeff Van Gundy, Susie Colbert, uh, Keyshawn Johnson, Jalen Rose, and Max Kellerman were among several on-air talent let go by ESPN in the latest round of layoffs last week as part of parent company Disney's cost-cutting measures. Smith said this isn't the end of layoffs, adding more is coming. There were a total of like 20 plus uh, people that have been laid off by Disney and ESPN, and there's potential that more could be on the horizon. Uh, they're kind of retooling the roster right now and adding different people like Pat McPhee, right? That was the big name that signed on. Uh, but Stephen A. Smith also said something that's very interesting that a lot of people are kind of curious about. He said, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I could be next. Uh, my eyes are wide open now. I'm never comfortable. I never take anything for granted, and I never assume that I am safe. Uh, he said amongst other things, uh, but this was kind of the core of like, oh, wow, like, wait a minute, is Stephen A. Smith really going to be laid off by ESPN? Now, the biggest sort of replacements or the biggest sort of firings is Jalen Rose and Jeff Van Gundy. Um, Max Kellerman, some people were a little shocked by. I wasn't personally because that guy's played musical chairs so much and it kind of feels like this was heading in that direction, right? Like there was so many... It was like, okay, well, let's put him over here, let's put him over here, let's put him over here, and it just kind of felt like sooner or later he was the one that was going to be the odd man out. And Jalen Rose, Jeff Van Gundy, uh, you know, people seem to either love or hate him. Uh, Jeff Van Gundy being the analyst and the broadcaster uh, for the games, you know, he bring, brings some some comedy, uh, you know, brings some interesting takes and uh, things that he says uh, on the air, but... You know, again, this is a new wave by ESPN. ESPN wants to cut costs, and they also, in the same breath, want to kind of go into a more modern uh, environment, right? Like, you need that at times. You, you don't want to be stagnant. You don't want to be complacent. Uh, you know, guys start phasing out. You start hearing the takes where it just doesn't make sense with the times. You know, you get the you get the people that are like, oh, back in the you know, well, we're not in the seventies, right? We're not in the eighties. We're in twenty twenty three, and however you feel about it, like this is the time that we're in. Like address the time that we're in, you know. And so you you see from a corporate standpoint, because that's all they care about is the numbers and the X's and O's, and it's a business, and they look at it as like you know, what is this person's you know, ratings, right? How do people feel about this person? How are the takes being perceived? This, that, and the other, you know, and cost. How much do these people cost compared to maybe one of these young bucks, right? Who's hot right now, right? That's why, like, the Pat McPhee thing makes a world of sense. He's super hot right now, uh, you know, big name, people love him, uh, you know, sort of a more modern, as I mentioned, you know, modern type uh, person that's giving modern takes, understands the times, understands the environment, you know, says a little stuff that, People are like, whoa, like, you know, it just, it, it's that, that, that draw, it's the allure, right? That's what ESPN is trying to do. ESPN has been, you know, extremely successful and, but for the most part has had pretty much the same structure, same group of guys forever, right? And they've always, they've always kind of kept guys in place, guys in position, um, you know, usually people, unfortunately, end up passing away, and then that's how they end up uh, getting replaced, right? ESPN usually likes to keep guys intact. Not saying that they've never fired anybody or let anyone go or anything like that, but, you know, they, there's, there's the big, big draws, right? Which leads to Stephen A., right? And the concern of, is he going to be fired? You know, he talks about, I don't want to be complacent. My eyes are wide open. Like, he's not worried about getting fired. <laughs> Again, however you feel about Stephen A., love him or hate him, you talk about him, you watch him, you listen to him. You know, he's he's box office, he's showtime, uh, to use some of his words. Look, I'm not the biggest fan of Stephen A. I think the things he says sometimes are ridiculous and you know, he's been in the game so long, he knows it's ridiculous, and it's almost like a character at this point. You know, think of like him, like even Skip Bayless, right? Like these guys who have been around forever and are about the controversy, about the controversial takes, about, you know, you you watch them and you're like, 
do these people even watch basketball? Like, do these people even watch football? These people even watch, but like, what is going, what is this take? But it's what drives the conversation. What happens is, is that you go, Stephen A is, you know, a guy, he doesn't, he's an idiot. He doesn't know anything. He, what is he talking about? This doesn't make any, but you're talking about him. You're tweeting about him. You're, you know, he's the big draw. He's about as safe as it gets, right? And one of the signals that he's safe is Pat McPhee's. And you're probably going to see other big names in the space get brought in by ESPN because why would I pay, you know, five, six, seven, eight guys, let's call it a hundred million, right? Pay these guys a hundred million to, to do these various little shows here and there. And some of them are successful. Some of them are not so much. Some of them are semi-successful, but I got this whole team that I got to pay for and man, and we got to do X, Y, and Z. Why do all that when I could take that same hundred million, go get this guy who's just taking off right now that's already established, that already has a following, that already has people that are, you know, looking at him as like, this is the next wave. Why not get the stars, right? It's just like, you know, the NBA, for example, right? Like the role players are nice. The role players are great. You need role players to, to have success for the team, but it's all about the stars. Role players don't don't win games. Role players don't draw the, the audience. Role players don't fill butts in the seats. It's the stars that do. It's the Stephen A. Smiths. It's the, you know, um, you know Pat McPhee's. It's those kind of guys of the world. The Skip Bayless, the Colin Cowherds. Like, you know, these guys are in the position they're in and have been in the positions they have been in for ever, <laughs> you know, 30 plus years. Because they are those guys. Again, whether you love them or hate them, uh, at the end of the day, these are these are the faces that have been the faces forever, right? And you know, you you have guys that are most of these guys are never going to leave, right? It's going to be until either they you know die or they just decide, all right, like I, I had my run, I'm 80 now, it's time for me to go a different direction. You know, and a lot of these guys, even before they became the stars and the faces of these networks and stuff, they still were working their way up the ranks and moving in. You know, even guys like Chris Bouchard, right? Um, all of these guys are notable figures that started out at the local paper and worked their way up to, you know, reporting for a, a big network and then worked their way. It, it just, it was a grind that went through, but... Now we're in an era where the grind isn't as long, right? Still got to grind, right? Like from a YouTube standpoint, right? I make videos. You subscribe to this channel. If you're subscribed to my Laker channel, um, just launched a uh, podcast network, all this stuff. Like I'm grinding every day. I'm making several videos every single day. Never miss a day. Never take days off. Whether I'm sick, I'm tired, whatever, I got to do it because it's part of the grind. I want to reach a certain point. I want to reach a certain standard. I want to be a fixture in the space in the world of sports. But I don't have to do the dirt work. I don't have to, you know, it's not like, like you can just start a YouTube channel. And if you know what you're talking about, you're entertaining, you can carry a conversation, you can, you know, be semi-entertaining, sneak some jokes in, etc. right? You do all those things, like, you, you provide content that people are willing to digest, you can grow rather quickly. You can develop in a much faster time than you could have 30 years ago. And so you're seeing guys that have a name behind them for something else and immediately jump into the space and boom, they have taken off, right? J.J. Redick is a great example. And he's over here now, do, and he there's talks about him maybe coming over and doing a show on ESPN or being or replacing Jeff Van Gundy or something. The stars, right? He was he, he had a name from basketball. He has the connections all the time. And now you're seeing all these sports icons, all of these, you know, coaches and they're all doing podcasts now. They're all having conversation. You know why? Because we live in an era that it's digestible content and people want to hear it. 
People want to hear their perspective. And if you can build that name and develop to a point where you have an audience, then you're you're forever secured, right? As long as you don't become like a psychopath or something crazy like that, you're, you're forever secured. And you can be controversial and you can do things that may go against the grain and you can say whatever because you're always going to be relevant at that point. And so Stephen A., I just, I don't buy for a second that he's worried that he can be replaced. And look, maybe, you know, maybe uh, this ages poorly and maybe he does end up getting fired. I mean, he would know what's going on behind the scenes more than anybody, right? But ESPN is clearly making an effort to try to trade in the role players for a star, right? They're trying to build the super team rather than like, hey, we have, you know, two or three stars and we're trying to you know have a bunch of these role play no they're they're putting these guys in place or at least trying to and attempting to to bring these guys that already have the name already have the following already did the grind but it wasn't as long of a grind right like jj reddick didn't have to grind up the ranks he did for the sport and the game of basketball but this is a completely different career a completely different trajectory right he he didn't have to work. He was able to come in, make a couple videos, boom, you're there. Make a team, all that stuff. You see, like Pat McPhee just decided, hey, I'm gonna do this, working for ball or bar stool, and grinded, and all of a sudden he goes and creates his own show, and then that takes out like, but it was the the process was a lot faster than some of these other guys, right? Max Kellerman, I mean, the dude was grinding for <laughs> You know, 30 years, right? He started in boxing and doing analyst and then moving over here and then going. Like, they, they were journeymen, right? And it's just, it's a different game. And what I think you're going to see, at least in the world of the ESPNs and maybe even the Foxes and stuff like that, you're going to see the stars play their role, be the fixture, and X amount of years down the line, that star will be replaced. So maybe Stephen A. Smith will be replaced relatively soon, within the next couple years, but it's not going to be during this wave, right? Because he is still a star. He's still a draw. He's still a huge fixture. He's still somebody that is relevant in the world today. Um, And... You know, you're going to you're going to see this wave, or at least in my opinion, I think you're going to see this wave of the star level just shows and analysts and personalities that are going to come in rather than rather than having fifteen shows with a bunch of guys that are X, Y, and Z, you're gonna see eight shows that are maybe longer or different segments or whatever, but it's just like the same eight guys, right? It's the same handful of guys that are going to be playing. And, and, you know, like you, that's what sells, right? Again, the stars are what put butts in the seats. So the guys that are, and and the reason I think it'll be recycled is because every five, 10 years, there's that new guy, right? Like 10 years from now, maybe it's me, right? (laughs) Oh, maybe I'm getting the call and ESPN's like, hey, we'll give you, you know, 20 million to do a show and stuff like that. But no, in all seriousness, though, who knows who the next the next wave is? And when the next wave comes, ESPN and these other networks will probably do the same thing, especially if this ends up being successful. Right. Like if they start bringing in all of these personalities and all of these fixtures that come in and all their shows are greatly successful then I think it'll be more justified, right? And ESPN has the name behind them. People are going to watch ESPN, whoever they put on. Yes, they, you know, you Max Kellerman and Jalen Rose and all them, they have their fans, but those fans will love the next guy that comes in because they love ESPN and they want to watch ESPN for the, the type of shows that they put on. And they'll come up with little creative gimmicks and this, that, and the other, and... Again, we're, we're moving into an era of personalities, right? Like, why do, why do you subscribe to my channels 
as opposed to somebody else's channels. And even if you are subscribed to them, why do you still subscribe to my channel? Because I am a personality of this channel that you either relate with, you enjoy listening to, um, you know, there's, there's something about me and the content that I'm putting out and the conversations that I am having with you that make you go, okay, I like this. I'm going to subscribe. You know, I, I, I disagree with some points. I like some points, you know, some of the things he says make sense. Some of the stuff, you know, he's an idiot on whatever, but it's the, the ideas, the conversation, it's, it's all the factors that go into it that make you go, okay, I, I'm going to subscribe, right? I, I enjoy the direction in which he goes, right? And that is what I think ESPN is doing. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think Stephen A. Smith is safe? Do you think he's not? Do you think it's somewhere in between? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments.